All right, people, welcome back. More card review, and this is the last card review before my break. After this, and after the Daily Duels grand finale live stream, I mean, that's pretty much it for a little while. You know, I'll be on my break. Uh, I can't really tell you how long the break will be, but uh, just stay, and I will keep you guys posted. Um, and hopefully, I can get all the channel changes uh, working and great and good. And when you guys, and when I come back, you guys will have all that great content that uh, you guys know and love. Like I said, I'm pretty set with what I want to change about the channel. Like I said Mondays and Wednesdays will still remain card review, so you don't have to worry about that. If you really love the series, don't worry. After the channel changes, it's still staying because the series I like doing it. It gets a lot of views, and uh, you know I like giving my opinion about cards. You know, uh, especially with daily duels gone, it's not like I'll be able to. View too many cards and get distracted while dueling, you know, because those duels, uh, those duels aren't live. I mean, this is pretty much just sit down, look at the card, focus on the card, talk about the card, you know, outside of me just doing all this background talk and all of that. Uh, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are going to be devoted to league. So if you came here for um, the you get to a draft links that I'm totally going to have season two prepared, it's going to be thrown in right in the week. There's going to have plenty of content because that's going to go on for a long time. There's going to be so many good decks and it's going to be a crazy, crazy season. Like, uh, cra even crazier than when I first wanted to do Season 2. It's going to be even crazier than that, right? Fair Card Friday is still going to be Fair Card Friday. You have to worry about that. If you like Fair Card Friday, that's still Fair Card Friday. And then uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm not uploading any videos per se. Like, there's nothing scheduled like that. But what we are doing on Saturdays and Sundays is live streams. The live stream will still be on Saturday. You know, still be that two-hour live stream, 10 to 12. Uh specific time and then on Sunday which usually we don't do anything on Sunday the channel's just silent on Sunday you know and there's just since now I've just been uploading the, the the live stream whenever you know uh, we're gonna be changing that now and uh, on Sunday we are going to be doing a new series similar to Taylor Duels but it's called Daniel Duels and it's a live stream where I'll be playing anything you know so unlike Daily Duels where you guys vote and I'm restricted so it's just going to be a live stream where you guys suggest whatever, I play whatever, and we just do whatever, you know? So, uh, yeah, so two live streams on the weekends. You get content during the weekdays. I think I think these channel changes will be uh, pretty great, pretty great. All right, so before we get to them, uh, that break in that channel change, let's go ahead and do this one last card review and then send it off with a bang. We're going to look at two trap cards. We're going to look at two spell cards on Monday. Let's look at two trap cards. So we got a Magic Specter card and a Harpy card. Like that, I didn't say they had any... I, had anything to do with each other. I mean, it, I guess both win, but yeah. So starting it off, we're going to look at it. The Magic Specter card this is Magic Specter Gus. The card art is interesting. I guess that's Kieran spinning back um, uh, a, a Morphage monster. Whatever happened to that deck? Like, the deck came out in OCG, I don't think it did anything, and then came out in TCG, and then nothing. Like, Absolutely nothing. I mean, it's a stun deck, but it's just so, so situational. It's like you ought to open up the perfect can. If you don't open up the perfect can, you ain't doing shit with that deck. I remember playing that shit on Daily Duels. But, um, I mean, this, this trap card is really simple. It's literally one sentence. Target a Magic Specter card in your Pendulum Zone. Special summoning. Now, as you guys know, Dirty Dan has took in uh, Magic Specters to a... Uh, to a regionals, and uh, you know, I, I play with it a nice chunk of time, play tested it as Dirty Dan. Would do you like this card? I don't say no, I'm gonna say I do not like this card. And the reason why I don't really like this card is because I'm taking an already set pendulum scale, ripping it out just to summon it, and it's still neg. And depending on what Magic Specter monster I summon, it'll be like, oh, well, it's a plus. And I guess it's supposed to be a more convenient way to summon IE Kin, because you can just put Kin in Pendulum Zone, which generally you can't, like, Pendulum summon it in uh, pure Magic Specter. So your scales are between, uh, what, two and five? So King's all six, I, I you know, it can't be pendulum summon, but if you set it in your pendulum scale and then activate this and then it would summon that king right out of the pendulum scale and then and, uh, the pendulum zone and then bam, you know, you have a king, which of course will then proceed to bounce and bounce and bounce. Now it doesn't have to, it can bounce itself, it doesn't have to, but I mean I guess the the plan is to bounce other metric monsters and just keep King on the field pretty much permanently. But I'm just not a big fan of this card. I'm really not. Like to devote another space in the deck like this could be set for more background this could be set for more hatred you know like to, to play this card especially when in my opinion there's another card that's way better and in my opinion that's pendulum board i 
like I think in the the Carbon Rise variant, Pendulum Born is actually a really good card. You know, we've seen it, we've seen it from my friend Aki and his uh, Magic Spectre deck. We've seen it from Vexicus. We've seen it from a handful of people who played uh, Magic Spectre Demise. It's actually pretty good, especially since you know you be pitching your hand and sometimes sending the monsters, or sometimes you just do it deliberately uh, with the power of Pendulum Call. You get to set up so quick, and you know, uh, Card Demise. You know, you could just be like, oh, set my hand, Card Demise. Oh, you know. Uh, I drew no more back row, but I, you know, I summoned the cat, or you know, I'll summon raccoon, get a search, whatever, get that uh, that key in, uh, pitch it, and then summon it back with a pendulum board who can summon from the graveyard and it can summon from the extra deck, which is two spaces where your magic specter monsters go and you really can't, you know, get too much a hold of them if you're, you know, your pendulum skills already on the course of the graveyard. I mean, I was like, you're not really running any call of the haunts or anything, but pendulum board is just, you know, just that card for you. Uh, this card, as I said, it's just like, I put the monster in the scale for a reason. It's not very often, not even the card in my variant, where I set my scales incorrectly. Like, that won't happen, you know? I'd rather just, oh, I have two of the same scale. I'd rather set one in the scale and pitch the other one and then revive it with Pendulum and War. Then, what, put both of them in the scale and pull out one of them with this card? I mean, I guess the good thing about this card is that at least it's searchable. Like, you can always just, you know, summon a fox or summon a toad and get that. So, like I said, the card's not terrible, I'm just not sure I would play it, you know? It's just kind of an anti-climactic card, and it's slow, too. It's it's slow. But, I mean, Pendulum Born is just a slow. Like I said, it, 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 it has its, I think it has its uses. I, I, I can see people playing, like, one. Because it's situationally good, like, especially with uh, Keenan and how it can get stuck in your Pendulum Zone, but, yeah. It's situationally good, but just cracking my scales, just pull one out, I'm just not sure if I'm too into that so yeah there we go that's what i think about my trip to guess all right looking at the harpy card now yeah harpy's got another card which, like what like why, why do harpies need another card i don't know now we just decided to make another harpy card it's been a while since they got new cards uh they made the deck it was you can't even say the deck was good it was it, it's okay it was, it's a nice casual deck you know, uh, it, it can do things. It can do rank seven plays. It can, you know, pop back row. It has that annoying ass monster that can attack you directly and fuck you up. And yeah, you know, and lightning story. Like that can do things, but it's still not the greatest. So maybe this new harpy card can help them. This is Harpy's Feather Storm. That's something to do with Harpy's Feather. That sure doesn't it? I don't know, but it sounds like it does. Card art is just kind of, I don't know, just a whole bunch of feathers and orange and pink and just swirls like there's not really much to the card art like i can't even tell if it's a harpy card for all i know it's just another you know twin twister or something but hey i guess their feathers are like hey these are harpy feathers like okay i guess uh the trap card is a normal trap card that reads if you control a wind wing beast type monster negate any monster effect your opponent activates this turn okay so it's kind of like your own sweeping breakthrough skill, you know, just stun your opponent for a turn of monster effects. Uh, but also, uh, if you control a harpy monster, which generally will be your wind wing beast type monster, you can have this card from your hand, because why not? So, you could decide, or you could just hold it in your hand and just play as long as you control harpy and then stun the shit out of your opponent. That's pretty good. And it's just negate any monster effect your opponent activates this turn. So, you know, your opponent activates the effect, you have a harpy, you just chain it, and that's negated, and everything else they do is negated. So they're like, oh, Insta Fusion for Norton, no, that's negated. Next scene to, you know, Castell, no, that's negated, you know. So it's it's a neck. It's 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 a neck. I have to give it to you because generally you negating a monster effect doesn't net you any advantage. You're you're stunning, which is I mean, I guess fun, you know, especially with how quick this game is. One turn could be the difference, but Harpies aren't that fast or strong, but, you know, being able to stun your opponent for a whole turn, they cannot activate any other monster effects that turn, it's uh, pretty strong, it's just, it's a neck, it really is, and it's cool that you can play it from your hand if you control a Harpy, which, as I said, will generally be your wind wing beast type monster, like, I really don't see what other deck you played, I mean, you can play with your, um, your wind barrier statue, because I know he's a wind wing beast type monster. There you go. So you control uh, uh, that barrier statue, and you can just negate monster effects so your opponent activates this turn. Let's go. All right. But no, seriously. Um, but it's a neg. But it has a second effect. Well, outside of being activated in hand, it has a second part to it. And this card, in its, in its owner's spell or trap zone, is destroyed by opponent's card effects. Okay, so. 
I have this site, you want to go to one toaster, target this, it's destroyed. Then what do I get to do? Uh, you can add one harp piece feather duster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And this is where I thought it was going to get a little crazy. So, uh, your Pog Pop says, you eat that and have a feather duster, and they already know that they're going to get it next turn. They know that they're going to get it from your from your deck or graveyard, just in case. It's like, I already used my limited to one harp piece feather duster. It's in the graveyard now. You can, get, you can go ahead and add it back. So... With this card, a lot of people are debating and wondering if Konami's going to unban Harpy Feather Duster and TCG. I don't think so. I don't think that they're going to do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Konami just doesn't bring this card over. I, and I really wouldn't be surprised if Konami says, you know, nah, we're good. We're good. <coughs> like I said, it's in some 20th anniversary pack set in Japan. I, I, I would not be surprised if Konami just, the TCG just doesn't bring it over. It wouldn't be the first time. They just don't bring over an OCG card. You know, because the card is not terrible. It's, I mean, it's a neg. It's kind of like a sweeping breakthrough scale. It's not terrible. But then the whole, like, hey, hey, you know, it searches Harpy Feather Duster. You know, people want us in TCG to ban on Harpy Feather. I mean, we're in a totally different game. Like, this is just coming from me, but we're way more conservative than them. They're really, they're really liberal in the OCG. Here in TCG, no, you know. Uh, we, we, we are the ones, when we split up, and I believe it was like the 2013 September ban list, when we split up in the OCG and TCG, we got that big old sweeping list, we banned Harp, uh, we banned Heavy Storm. Heavy Storm, of course, already banned, but we banned Heavy Storm. We're like, no, no matter that, wiping, sweeping, destruction shit. And then we put all the great back rows down, you know, we're like, one bottom list, one torrental, one compulsion, you know, we put all of that down. Now we got three solid strikes, and it's just fucking stupid, but hey, Konami wants to earn money. But the, the fact still remains is that, if you would unban Harpy Feather Duster and then try to move us to more of the OCG, lots of things would need to be changed. I'm just not sure if Konami is willing to do all them big grand uh, changes. Konami doesn't like kind of cards like that now. They're like, monsters are way more forgiving, you know? Because think about it, we have Regeki, but they don't, you know? So we just throw Regeki, skillless, nothing, blah, you know? Uh, we don't care, you know, monsters are expendable, but back row, back row can, you know, easily be the difference, you know, you can always get more monsters, but getting more back row, getting more spells, getting more traps, a little bit slower than that, you know, that's with how things float in this day and age, you know, uh, now, there's a reason why it would be Harpy's Feather Dust throw for Heavy Storm, and the reason why that, is, and the reason why OCG has that is because with Harpy's Feather Dust, you can't crack your own scales. OCG would be cracking their own scales, activating them uh, monsters like uh, Plush Fire and, and Aradine while, you know, uh, Heavy Storm you as well. But uh, and it's not like they play too much background. It's like, oh, you bully your own background. They don't play too much background anyway. So they'll just set the pendulum scales that want to be destroyed. Heavy Storm, not only do they have to blow everything up, but I get to summon with the plush fire. I get to search with the Aronade. So they were kind of like, yeah, no, no Heavy Storm. Here's Happy Feather Duster. Blow their backup. Don't blow your own shit out. And then when you look at it from that point of view, you're just like, oh, that's so broken. You know, it's kind of like Giki. It's so skillless. You, you know, you, you don't even weigh the options like Heavy Storm. But, I mean, did you weigh the options too much with Heavy Storm anyway? Not really. So, um,. The hack still remains is that I don't think that they're going to bring back Harpy Feather Duster. I mean, if they do, we might need some changes. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they up some of their back row. But uh, I think Twin Twister is enough. Like, Twin Twister, uh, in comparison to the other back rows and Pendulum Scales and all that, like, this game is just so fucking crazy that... I mean, and Harpy Feather Duster be kind of slow, too. Like, just the fact that Twin Twister is a quick play spell and stuff like that and uh, Cosmic Cyclone, Helps because I mean, ABC's a top deck, they play that field spell. Yeah, you gotta help you feather dust it. They've already activated the field spell, searched it, summoned and equipped. I mean, look at that. You can go ahead and uh, help you feather dust to blow up the field spell and blow up one of the ABCs, but all I need is just one more, and then here's an that dragon. So, yeah. So, I don't think they're gonna do it, but I mean, this is a fun little card for the OCG anyway. I said the card wouldn't be terrible without help you feather duster, but uh. I just don't think was, I don't think TCG is gonna do it, but I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Anyway, there you go, people. There is your final card review before my break. So, um, by the time you see this, the vitamin, I mean, the, the daily duels grand finale live stream should be about wrapping up because this goes up at twelve. And uh, I mean, thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you guys for watching me. It's been a crazy year, crazy two. Uh, 2016, but it's been fun. It's been fun. I said we we began 20 uh 2016 with channel changes, and we're gonna go out with channel changes even more. So we stuck with it for a year. Uh, we we lessened the load and changed things around. The daily duels is time for it to go. 
And uh, just, you know, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. I appreciate every single one of you guys who actually take the time to watch my videos that, you know, I, I take the time to put uh, do the content, put out the content, and, you know, try to stay as consistent as possible. And you guys uh, just continue to watch and support me, and I really do appreciate it. So, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for all the support. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. It's just not a mindless dribble. I really do mean it. And uh, I will see you guys with another card review when we come back from the break. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the first time I, when I come from my break, like that Monday, it probably won't, I probably won't, will upload on Monday, because I want to come in with a bang. When I come back, especially with the announcement, and people come to my channel for League, I want it to be on Tuesday, so I'll probably come back on a Tuesday, so I know it's random, but when I come back, I want to be like, bam, here's League, you know, welcome to my channel, because, you know, I'm going to definitely try to network and get everybody to uh, try to guest upload and do that, and then, of course, then Wednesday, you'll get your card of you, and then we'll keep on, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go like that, but to just come back on Monday and be like, okay, here, we're back, here's a card of you, and everybody's, like, waiting for League, especially other uh, people who will come from other YouTubers channels, crossing my fingers, hopefully, I want them to come back with a bang, so I'll probably skip that Monday's card review and then come straight into League on Tuesday, but hey, hey, hey great content, great content, so... Thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys next time, whatever that may be. Thanks for watching.